Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum. This is our Medicinal Chemistry Lecture number 9. In this lecture video, we will discuss analgesics. The two major categories of analgesics are narcotics and NSAIDs, which are non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. So, first of all, what is algesia and pain? Pain is the result of an electrical signal being sent from your nerves to your brain. And algesia is sensitivity to pain or capacity to feel pain. There are three major classes of pains. These are nociceptive pains in which tissue is damaged, neuropathic pain, the pain due to damage of the nerves, and psychogenic pain the pain due to some physiological factors like stress or depression. So, what are analgesics? Analgesics are actually the painkillers. The analgesics are the medications that relieve different type of pain and inflammation. There are two major categories of analgesics, which are opioid analgesics and anti-inflammatory analgesics. The mechanism of both analgesics are different. In opioid analgesic, the, perceptive, the perception of pain is reduced by the blocking different receptors or blocking neurotransmitters in which nerve impulses are transmitted. So the bl uh, blocking nerve impulse transmission uh, we block the pain reception and thus opioid analgesics works in this way in case of anti-inflammatory analgesics the inflammation produced by prostaglandins is reduced and thus the anti-inflammatory analgesics works in this way and the inflammation is reduced by the inhibition of synthesis of prostaglandins and leukotrienes. Opioid analgesics. So first we will discuss what are opioid analgesics. Opioid analgesics are also called as narcotics. Narcotics work by changing the brain's perception of pain. There are two types of narcotic analgesics. These are exogenous analgesics and endogenous analgesics. Exogenous analgesics are that kind of opioid analgesics which are used by outside of our body and we take these drugs or narcotics to relieve pain from outside. These are the examples of these are morphine, codeine, fentanyl, hydrocodone, methadone, naloxone and oxycodone whereas the endogenous analgesics are that kind of compounds which are produced inside our body by or we can say that these are produced by our body itself to relieve that kind of pains and these are endorphins dynorphins and enkephalins so these are the uh, analgesics or opioid analgesics which are produced by our body itself. Mechanism of action of opioid analgesics. Opioid analgesics works by when a, a stimuli which may be a chemical, mechanical or thermal. So this kind of stimuli when binds or when acts on sensory neurons in epidermis. So then in our epidermis the nociceptors are present in sensory neurons and these nociceptors transmits signals from neurons to neurons in the form of electrical signals and then these signals are transferred to the medulla oblongata where perception of pain occurs and by these sensory neurons the 
nerve impulses are transmitted from the synaptic junction by these neurotransmitters which are released from presynaptic junction of presynaptic nerve cells to the postsynaptic nerve cells where these receptors bind these neurotransmitter binds to the receptors and thus the signal is transferred from one neuron to other neuron so now we discuss that how opioid analgesics works there are three kind of opioid receptors and these are the three major classes which are mu delta and kappa opioid receptors so opioid analgesics binds with mu and delta opioid receptors in presynaptic nerve cell where they signal for the closure of calcium ion channel and when this calcium ion channel is closed so the depolarization cannot occur and these calcium ions cannot move inside the nerve cell and thus they inhibit the release of neurotransmitters so in this way the neurotransmitters are not released and the second function of opioid analgesics is that they bind to the kappa opioid receptors with post synaptic neuron cells and where these kappa opioid receptors when bind with opioid analgesics they open potassium ion channel and when potassium ion channels are open these potassium ion channels move outside of these neurons or nerve cells and in this way the release of potassium ion channels provides relief from pain which is called as hyperpolarization so in case of depolarization depolarization causes release of neurotransmitters and depolarization occurs when calcium ions calcium ions move from outside to the inside and thus this is inhibited by the opioid analgesics similarly in case of uh, kappa opioid receptors they open the potassium ion channel in post synaptic junction where potassium ion channels are released from inside to outside so in this way the signal transfer or perception of pain is reduced anti inflammatory drugs so this is the second kind of drugs so they work by reducing the inflammation these includes acetaminophen aspirin which is present in dispirin and acetaminophen is in paracetamol so they are also antipyretic non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs which are called as nsaids and cox inhibitors so these are the different kind of anti inflammatory drugs the the major anti inflammatory drugs are nsaids so most nsaids works by inhibiting cox when cox 1 and cox 2 enzymes these are the cyclooxygenases which are inhibited by nsaids the examples of nsaids are ibuprofen which is present in brufen the brand name of this medicine ketoprofen in capron capro caprofen naproxen in dolonep diclofenac voltaren and silicoxib the brand name of this medicine celebrex so these are the examples of nsaids now we discussed that what are cox1 and cox2 cox1 is the cyclooxygenase 1 enzyme and it is constitutive enzyme it produces prostaglandins that are involved in the protection of gastrointestinal mucosa or gastrointestinal layer and they are also involved in platelets activation and aggregation and some other functions whereas cox2 cyclooxygenase 2 is inducive enzyme so it will be induced when there is an injury inside a certain organ or cells or muscles so they generates prostaglandins that mediate inflammation pain and fever inside our body cox2 selective inhibitors so these are the important cox2 selective inhibitors so we have to inhibit cox2 for the removal of inflammation so cox2 selective inhibitors have fewer side effects they causes less stomach and intestinal problems due to the protection of gastrointestinal mucosa and 
the cox1 is not inhibited so the reason is that these are cox2 selective inhibitors are silicoxib which is present in silibrex valdicoxib in bextra and roficoxib in viox now we will discuss the mechanism of action of NSAIDs. So the arachidonic acid is used for the production of prostaglandins. So the arachidonic is converted into prostaglandins by cyclooxygenase. The cyclooxygenase 1 which is constitutive and present in all parts of the body or cells it is increased, it is increases the gastrointestinal mucus and platelet segregation. So this enzyme is important and the inhibition of this enzyme will, will, will degenerate the gastrointestinal mucus layer. Whereas this COX-2 enzyme cyclooxygenase 2 is in, in, induced or it is activated when there is an injury or damage of the cells so it releases prostaglandins which causes inflammation, pain and fever. So the NSAIDs are that kind of anti-inflammatory drugs that reduces inflammation by inhibiting COX-1 and COX-2. So the, these medicines inhibits COX-2 as well as COX-1 and therefore causes stomach problem. So if we have COX-2 selective inhibitors, they will not inhibit COX-1 and in this way they will protect our stomach layer and only they will uh, inhibit COX-2 and thus the inhibition of inflammation. So that's why COX-2 selective inhibitors are important. So thanks for watching my video. If you like my video, please like, comment and share. Thanks.